When you're building a custom fiberglass subwoofer box or other part of your install, it's important that the structure is strong so that we don't lose any acoustic output. But how thick does the fiberglass structure need to be and how many layers of fiberglass do we need to apply? That's coming up. Welcome to the first ever Fabrication Friday. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Basically what I'm gonna do is the questions that you guys have posted down in the comments below and sent me via the website, I'm gonna answer those questions on a weekly basis. Together we can learn how to master car audio and how we can design, build, and install our ideal car audio systems. This week, Peter asked this. Great videos. Thanks, Peter. For a larger fiberglass subwoofer enclosure that is fiberglass on three larger sides, how many layers of one and a half ounce chop mat should there be to provide reasonable stiffness? I do plan to add plenty of braces, but this is my first fiberglass box and I'm trying to not have to build it twice. Great question, Peter. This is actually a question that I get quite often. I also see this question asked quite often on the forums online. Usually when it's asked, people will just throw out an arbitrary number of layers that you should use, and I kind of want to avoid just giving you a value because I'd rather teach you the methodology behind determining how many layers you need. So in this video, I'm going to help you learn how you can actually determine how many layers are needed and how you can actually use less layers and make everything stronger. So here's the deal. To determine how many layers are needed, we just have to build it. That's the only way. Now I know that a lot of the reason that people really wanna know how many layers is so that they can plan out exactly how much materials they need to buy. So I can help give you a starting point, but my honest opinion is that fiberglass mat is pretty cheap. Realistically, it's not gonna hurt you to buy more mat than what you really need. In fact, I'd actually encourage you to intentionally buy more mat than what you think you need because there's nothing worse than being halfway through a project and running out of the fiberglass mat itself. Now fiberglass resin, on the other hand, is expensive. But the best way to add as much strength as possible to your project is to add as much mat to the resin as possible with fully wetting out all of the mat. So let's get back to what I think is a starting point for a minimum number of layers. In my mind, the starting point for the minimum number of layers of a fiberglass project is four layers of one and a half ounce chop mat. Chop mat actually comes in a number of different weights and one and a half ounce is kind of the middle of the road. If you're using a heavier mat, say two ounces chop mat or three ounces, you're not gonna need as many layers. But with that said, that thicker mat is a little bit harder to work with. It's harder to get into corners and stuff like that. That's why I like one and a half ounce chop mat as kind of an average mat to use. Now again, I wanna stress that one and a half ounces is strictly a starting point minimum. Now here's why I say this is a minimum. Let's say that your part is really flat, like a sheet of paper. It's gonna take many, many layers to make your flat part strong enough that it's not gonna flex. If your part is naturally curved though, it doesn't take as many layers to make it as strong. The curve will actually add much more strength into the shape. Most every mold is a little bit different with a combination of flat areas and curvy areas, so that's why you just simply have to build it. So I've explained to you guys that a flat surface requires more layers. What if there was a way that you could make a flat surface actually require less layers of fiberglass mat? Well, there is, and it's actually a simple solution. You just add curves. Let's take a look at a real world example. Let's say that we're molding the backside of a fiberglass subwoofer box into the corner of a trunk of a vehicle. Oftentimes that surface will be large and flat. As we know, flat surfaces require a ton of layers in order to not flex. And since this is a subwoofer install, it's even more important that that fiberglass shell does not flex and rob acoustic energy from the subwoofer. But if we add some curvature into that flat part of the panel, we can make it a lot more strong. Now there are a couple ways to do this. Of course, to start the procedure, I'm gonna lay down a bunch of masking tape onto the surface, and then I would start applying my normal layers of fiberglass. But after I've molded a couple of layers, I would intentionally add wooden dowels on top of the fiberglass structure, and then literally mold those wooden dowels 
into the fiberglass. So basically what I've done is created an initial fiberglass structure. I've put the wooden dowels in place using either hot glue or CA glue, and then I'm actually applying fiberglass mat over those wooden dowels, making them a permanent part of the structure. Now this is much like adding bracing to a subwoofer box, but the deal is you're not adding the strength with the actual wooden dowel itself. It could be made of nylon or something flexible. Where the strength is coming from is the fact that you're adding these bumps and these curves to the fiberglass structure. Now I mentioned that you could use something soft. I've even seen people use rope. Personally, I found wood to work the best because it doesn't move around when you're trying to dab your paintbrush on top of it when you're applying the mat over it. So now we know a good starting point of about four layers of one and a half ounce chop mat. And we know a good way of encouraging additional strength in the layup is to add curves. How do we know that it's thick enough? Well, the way we test it is just trying to flex it. That was a ride. When the part is still in its molded position, most of the time it's gonna be in a part of the vehicle that flexes. So it's gonna be against a carpet panel, it's gonna be against a plastic panel that if you push on, there's gonna be a little bit of flex. So after your initial layers have been applied and dried, that's when you're gonna to wanna to just simply push it with your thumb and see if it flexes. If the area that you are pushing on does seem to deform, you need to add more layers. Now I do wanna point out that it's important that you do this while the part is still within the vehicle or when the part is still on what Whatever molding surface you're using. This is because when you add additional layers, the fiberglass is going to constrict and want to warp. So you want to make sure that it's still on your initial mold. Absolutely do not pull the part out and then add layers. It will warp and it will not fit back where you want it to. Trust me, I've learned this the hard way. Now there's gonna come a point where when you're pushing on it with your thumb, it's not gonna deform at all. If you're doing a fiberglass door pod or something like that that's just a smaller speaker, that's probably gonna be good enough. But in the case of a subwoofer, we need to do an additional test. Once again, with a subwoofer, critical that there is no flex whatsoever. The test that I'll do for a subwoofer box is literally put my whole body weight on top of it. For a subwoofer box, the part should not deform under this 200 pound load. So Peter, I hope that this helped answer your question, but something I really want people to just get out of these videos is the courage to just try things. I see a lot of minor little questions constantly on the forums and online, and there's nothing wrong with asking questions. You should never fear asking questions, but don't be afraid to just try stuff. That's how we all really learn. In this case, I urge you to just try the fiberglass process, and as you become more and more skilled at it, you're just gonna learn and have an intuition about how many layers something is gonna take. This intuition will bring you one step closer to mastering custom car audio. Thank you again for the question. If you guys have a question you'd like to ask, let me know down in the comments below, or shoot me a message using the contact form at my website, www.caraudiofabrication.com. Also, be sure to sign up for the free training program email list down below. And if you're new here, check out some of my videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. A special thanks goes out to Ivor, Emmanuel, Rory, Eddie, Richard, Mark, Truman, and Jerry, along with all the other Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for all your support and making these videos possible. Thanks again for watching this video.